I'm James Johnson, and you're watching Niagara Pro Tips. Hello, and welcome back to what should be hopefully the fourth and final video in this uh, series on JSON and MQTT. So we left off uh, with using this relative JSON schema uh, component to publish to a string publish point where each time or each component that it's executing uh, would update the string and the same topic uh, would be updated for each individual error handler. So uh, there might be a case though where the client really only cares about one of the error handlers or something and we want to be able to break this apart into individual topics um, without having to set up a JSON schema under each device and linking that schema to a specific um, publish point. So using this same uh, relative JSON schema, when you look at the wire sheet, uh, you'll see that there's a couple topics here. There's a current base and a current base and output. And whenever it executes each, each time the output's updating, those topics are being fired um, either with just the base component or the base component and what the output value is. So uh, if you think about looking at this uh, output history, then what that uh, second topic is doing is, is passing two items, two bits of information, the base item plus the output, this result here in the, in the spy view. So we've got two pieces of information. And uh, what we want to do here is, uh, um, we need to link through a queue probably as well um, because we do potentially need to slow things down a little bit uh, to be processed by the driver or whatever it might be. Now, in the previous example, we just used this engine cycle message queue and uh, when we linked in, it, it took that string property. There's also uh, in the queues, there's an engine cycle message and base uh, queue component. And uh, this is used with that current base and output um, topic here. So the idea is that we would link this topic into the action on the on the queue. And then uh, just to slow things down a little bit so that we can you know, see, particularly in the wire sheet, what's going on. I'll go uh, in here and clear the hidden flag on the rate component or the rate slot on that queue component rather. And, and I'll set this to something like one second. Now that, that's probably much slower than it needs to be. Um, you might need to tweak it from the 50 milliseconds on a JSON, a PC probably not. In this case, I'm really trying to slow it down so that we can you know, see what's going on here basically. Uh, now in the palette, there's also a program subfolder here and there's some example program objects. One of them is something in there called a relative topic builder. And uh, I took that program object, drag it into the station, and I made a little bit of uh, some modifications to the program object. Now, um, it's going to be beyond the scope to really get into all the nitty gritty, but I will pull up the program uh, property sheet and the program editor here for just a second and uh, show you what it looks like. So if someone wants to look at it and tweak it or use it, you can look at the text here. So I'll link the out slot of the queue into the base item changed action on the program object. And when I look at the, pro the property sheet of the program object, what you'll see is there's a topic template here, which is a string property. And this is where I can define what the topic is gonna look like that gets used. And what I've done is uh, building one here and then a forward slash. And then in the string, there's essentially a string variable here uh, that I wanna substitute when the program object runs and that'll plug in what the floor is and in this case it's actually going to use the display name of the floor so instead of floor with no space one it'll be floor space one and then a forward slash and then another string um, variable essentially um, that'll resolve the display name of the air handler device being processed when we look at the uh, real quick at the program object then you can see that uh, whenever that action's invoked, it's going to be passed in a B value, which happens to be that base and output pair. And so the program object just takes that and resolves um, the device from uh, that base item. And then uh, it's going to construct the string using just the Java string uh, format method and uh, give it the arguments here to that uh, format method. So it's going to take that, that topic template string and then these are the two um, variable substitutions basically they're going to happen. 
and it sets that value um, to that topic output slot and that's going to happen first so that we update the topic first before we update the value and then it's going to take and set the value out slot it's going to update that with um, the schema output that result um, from the JSON schema so we're going to break those two bits apart and link them into a uh, control point a proxy point for the abstract driver here abstract MQTT driver so if I go under um, the points here then uh, I can create a, a new uh, publish point again so in this case I'll do a, a string publish point and maybe I'll call this um, AHU info or something like that and at this point the topic is sort of irrelevant because we're going to link into it so I'll just hit OK here and then take a look at the uh, AX property sheet for that control point so uh, it is you know retained message and published on chains by default you can decide again about the QoS level do you want to uh, set it at least once for reliability or, or whatnot uh, what we want to do then is uh, I need to link mark on this relative topic builder here so I'll right click and choose link mark and then I need to um, link on the proxy extension to the topic so we'll link from the relative topic builder and I'll pick the topic output and link that to the topic slot on the proxy extension and then I need to link the actual point value as well so I'll do the link from again and we'll pick the value out and decide which slot to link that into there and now uh, what we want to want to look at then is to you know generate the JSON here and uh, with the MQTT lens client uh, we can subscribe to the right topics now uh, what it should be is a floor space one like that forward slash and then it would be the display name of the air handler like ahu01 or something along those lines and it's possible for the client to create all those individual subscriptions uh, or in this case i could use a wild card so with mqtt topics uh, subscriptions you can use a plus symbol like that as a wild card to subscribe to uh, the plus symbol represents a topic level so uh, i could have slash you know, plus again so that could be floor one slash air handler one slash points or or you know whatever um, topic arrangement i had but each plus symbol is a wild card for a topic level or um, the uh, hash symbol or the pound symbol is a wild card that can go at the end of that um, topic subscription it has to be preceded by a leading forward slash but the, that symbol represents one or more topic levels um, after that um, static reference there uh, so in, in any case I'll, either one should work I'll subscribe you can see my subscription here with the, the wild card there so when uh, we invoke the generate JSON then what should happen is it's going to go through and process each one of those messages and you can see here that the topic is changing and the payload is changing also with the uh, the count and the device uh, name there is uh, is changing so I made a rookie mistake <laughs> uh, the uh, my MQTT lens broker is disconnected right now actually so I'm saying I want to have a subscription but the brokers um, my clients disconnected from the broker so I didn't see anything update here uh, so if I tell the um, broker to um, connect again then it'll actually send that subscription and we can see those uh, those messages will update here uh, so maybe just to you know uh, emphasize here you can see now there's a building one floor one air handler one two you know 13 14 uh, three and so forth so this is only showing uh, the last five messages um, that have been received uh, with that wildcard um, subscription here so you I could uh, increase it here um, not sure how many this client might let me show but uh, you can in this case see then there's you know Aaron four and 15 and five and so forth so the client is uh, showing all these different messages that have been received 
and uh, if I was to were to generate the JSON again, then it would go through and again this will go through and, and fire again, and there'll be new messages with new um, timestamp values, new um, new message IDs. Uh, you can see the the numbers are changing over here in the client 1154 and 1156 and so far. So it's it's rolling through and uh, subscribing to those topic updates. So we talked about a few different things, but just kind of in summary, one was to use uh, a single JSON schema and that JSON schema was using a query uh, that was querying for all the air handler data. So it's basically looking at the, the backnet network uh, and then doing a BQL query to display the device name uh, the display name of the point, the value of the point, and the status. And that was uh, the extent of the query was from control points. And we were using a predicate to limit it to just one pro proxy points that were under um, air handler devices. So with one schema, we were able to export basically information from 285 control points under 15 devices to a single string published point, which might be what your client's looking for. But there were other options of using a relative schema where that base query uh, finds, say in this case, 15 devices, and then it will run a subsequent point query against each one of those individuals. So the JSON payload then was specific to just an individual device. And we demonstrated linking uh, through an engine cycle message queue to a single published point where that topic, that single topic was used for all 15 air handlers and it was updated once each, once for each air handler. And then the last part was demonstrating using an engine cycle message in base queue with a program object to construct on the fly the topic output and the value output. And we linked those into a single proxy point, a publish point, but it was publishing to 15 different topics. So each time uh, that component was processed, each base component was processed, that resulted in a new message going to a unique topic for that specific device. So hopefully this helps clear things up for you a little bit and I uh, encourage you if you haven't done so, look at the Tritium University uh, at the uh, JSON Toolkit uh, training module there and it goes into some more depth about the other uh, components and things in the, in the JSON Toolkit palette and how to do some things that I kind of glossed over about setting up the base uh, objects and counts and different message components. So be sure to check that out as well. Hope you enjoyed this uh, series on JSON and MQTT. Stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.